what is up my thrifty friends tabs here from the urban goddess shop i am a canadian reseller i'm a mom to two girls a wife i work part-time in a hospital pharmacy and i love to sell used clothing online here on youtube i just share my journey and all the ins and outs in my business so if you are new make sure you tap subscribe and hit like if this is the type of content that you're into i have 26 sales over $30 and we're going to break them all down. We're going to go over keywords that I'm using because I do think those have an impact on sales. I'm also going to break down my sales, my gross number, how many items sold, my average sale price, even though things look really good and you're going to be like, why are you disappointed? You're still making money. But I'm going to actually lay out like more numbers and tell you why. I don't know. My sales have been so slow like so slow and i personally feel victimized <laughs> by posh live shows i don't know they are completely ruining the i don't want to say the app because i do see that other people are like having their highest sales months and things like that i don't know for me since live shows came to canada the activity in my closet has gone right down like right down and it's super disappointing because i i don't know what type of changes they could make but yeah it's definitely having an impact on my business all right we're gonna jump right into it i'm gonna talk a little bit more about that at the end let's go over these sales because i have some good sales i have some items that are going to be surprising that maybe you see out in the thrift that you haven't been grabbing and not everything is a brand. A lot of things I sell on style too. Okay, first item that sold is a Chaps Quilted Equestrian Vest. I like this because it's quilted, it has equestrian style. I know it's kind of a trend right now. Keywords that I used for this were quilted, equestrian, and western, and this best sold for $36. Next up is a pair of Lululemon Wonder Under high-rise leggings. These were in a size four and they sold for $60. These were a newer style, so I am, you know, kind of disappointed in what they sold for because, you know, six months, a year ago, I could have sold these for $75, no problem. I am seeing the value of the Lulu leggings kind of going down, but I think it's just the shopping habits. People aren't wanting to spend as much money right now. Next up is an Aritzia Wilfred Thayas cream knit cardigan sweater in a size small. This sweater is a very current style. It sold for $63, still a little bit lower than probably what I thought it would sell for. They do retail for, I think, $150. I was happy to kind of get this item moving really quickly through my closet. Style tags that I would include for this are neutral, minimalist, and academia. Because I feel like academia, like the light academia, really falls into this trend. This with like a plaid skirt with some loafers or some dark colored, um, not leggings, but like tights, you know, would look super cute. Love these types of pieces. Next is a Free People Adela slip dress in a size small. This one sold for $35. I don't find the value in all of Free People's stuff as, as well as it used to. And I think there's just so much in the resale market right now. Free People, I think, is also doing maybe resale on Poshmark. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like I heard that they have their own page. I don't know. Uh, some items I hope for more, but eh, whatever. It is what it is. And style tags that i would use for something like this are bohemian floral and flowy i love flowy if it looks like it moves nicely i put it in there and actually on one of poshmark's trending styles or whatever and i saw this in summer probably more than i did now but flowy was like falling into multiple trends and people were looking for flowy tops or flowy maxi skirts. So I do think that that is a good keyword if you have an item that has like that flowy look. You know, you know what flowy is. <laughs> I feel like, I feel so silly talking about this right now, this flowy keyword. And uh, next up is a vintage no surrender teal acid wash sweatshirt. This was a men's large. It sold for $32. It's a vintage one. If you grew up in the 90s, I don't know if it was in the States, but I know in Canada, 
No Surrender was just a huge brand, like late 90s, early 2000s. It was a brand that everyone wore. Style tags that I would use on something like this is vintage 90s. And I used grunge because it kind of had like a skater grunge style to it. Definitely, this is like a sweater of my heart, something that I that I love sourcing and finding and I don't find very often. Next up is a pair of Lululemon black wide leg pants. I call them a Y2K style. They were definitely like a mid 2000s. They were in a size six and they sold for $40. I did have these listed higher because they were trending in summer and maybe a little bit into fall, but I'm thinking it's kind of cooling off. Even though wide leg pants are a trend and a thing right now, especially in athletic wear, I know my daughter's been buying, um, I think Aritzia has some, maybe it's even the TNA ones, the wide leg sweats or whatever. She's just loving them. These, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't do as well. And they were in excellent condition, but it's, you know, an item's only worth what the buyer's willing to pay for them, right? Totally missed this one. Next up is a Pendleton Aztec cardigan sweater. It was pretty lightweight, sold for $25. I thought this one was going to do a lot better than it did. She sent me an offer and I accepted it. So moving along, putting the money back into my business. Next up is an Aritzia Sunday Best pleated faux leather olive skirt in a size 4. This sold for $37. It was a new with tags item. I was expecting to make a little bit more on it but uh, I think I didn't have it listed soon enough before Halloween because I, I thought that that would have been a good Halloween and even with uh, Wednesday Adams coming out I feel like that whole dark academia we're gonna see that becoming more of a trend probably a keyword that you want to make sure you're using if you feel that the item falls into that category because she is like rolling a whole era of dark academia coming out like kids are going to be shopping for it and I don't know if you watched the show yet on Netflix but it was a really good series we just finished it up next is a Lululemon full day ahead long sleeve button down shirt it was in a size 12 it sold for $40 this is another one that I feel like I thought was going to sell for more money and now I look at it and I'm like I don't know if I would grab this again especially with my cost of goods on it style tags that I used were flannel plaid and coastal because I feel like this has very much like a west coast style to it worn with like a beanie toque and some and some jeans or rolled up jeans I think that's just a whole vibe and style starting to move through those skims pieces that I bought this one is the skims essential long sleeve scoop neck bodysuit in a size medium it sold for $80 my average cost of goods I think worked out to be about $45 so I haven't necessarily lost money on the items but probably not seeing the profit margin that I was hoping to see you know what it's a lesson learned right you you buy you realize and then you're like don't do that again <laughs> but still I mean this is a great piece it was new without tags you can't go wrong and I think they retail for like $140 so that's still like 60 bucks off retail price actually funny story I had someone reach out to me and they wanted me to drop the price I can't remember what it was maybe it was a bra and she wanted me to drop the price and I said no I couldn't like the best I could do was this price and she was like you know I can buy it for the same price on skims with free shipping and I was like what do you want me to say to that I was just like okay good luck <laughs> like I literally did not know how to respond to her I was like okay I, I don't know what you want me to say I can't offer free shipping and that's the lowest I can go on the items so best of luck hope you can find it on skims for free shipping <laughs> Sometimes when people say that, I'm just like, what do you want? Like, what, what are you trying to get at from here? I think they're wanting you to lower your price, but yeah, I was not lowering it anymore. Next is an Aritzia Wilfred leopard mini skirt. It was a crepe-like material and size six sold for $65. I was shocked. When this sale went through, I was like, wow okay I'm liking that I have sold these skirts before very similar style but typically they're selling for like 45 to 55 I'm happy with this uh, style tags that I used for this one were animal print crepe 
and minimalist. And crepe is another one of those keywords that I've seen pop up into Poshmark's trending styles. They use it to describe material often. So if I have something that's like that crepe-like material, I will add that keyword into it because I think it's something that people are searching when they're looking up items. Next is a sale that is $1 below 30. It sold for $29, but it's an Eddie Bauer and I love shouting these out. So this is an Eddie Bauer lamb's wool knit dad sweater in a size large and it sold for $29. I love these pieces. These are amazing. I think, okay, full transparency. I was hoping that this item would sell for over $50 because last year my knit sweaters just did so well. This year, it's like pulling teeth to get them to sell and I'm doing a lot of good deals. Now, typically these types of sweaters, I do have a lower cost of goods on. I am like calculating a certain profit margin and I'm, yeah, it's kind of annoying me that I'm not hitting it. That buyer's market is just a little bit different this winter. Style tags that I would use for this are wool, cabin core, and coastal. Some of my favorite ones. I love those styles too. Next is a pair of Neosens black heeled tall leather boots. These were in a size seven. They sold for $70. This is a new to me brand. So if you've never heard of it, I'm gonna spell it out. It's N-E-O-S-E-N-S. -E -E really good quality. What made me pay attention was the cobbling on the bottom heel. And I was like, okay, there's something something about these boots i quickly searched up the brand and was like wow okay they retail for like 330 dollars here's the big butt i have had these for over a year so that's like my big butt on this one i don't know if i would grab them again now looking at them the style is probably not as trendy as the style, so not that they can't sell and do well still, but it's not the typical riding style boot that I would pick up. I'm happy it's sold. I just don't know if I would grab these ones again. And to tell you the truth, she actually had quite a few questions about them. She wanted to know how big the calf was and some other details. I answered quite a few questions and I was almost feeling like the sale wasn't going to happen and I was like, man, this is a lot of work because I store a bunch of these boots out in the garage and totes and she ended up grabbing them. So I was so thankful. And then she also left this charming little love note, not even little, it was big. These boots are amazing. They are really great condition. The bottoms also have a wonderful grip and the fit is perfect. They fit my they fit my lanky calves perfectly. That's what she was most worried about was her calves. I couldn't be more happy. You're definitely a great person to buy from and your communication has been great. Thank you so much. You take amazing care of your items. Happy holidays to you. That is like the sweetest paragraph love note I feel like I've ever received. And uh, I did go above and beyond on this one. She had a lot of questions and I did my best to answer them. Now, here is a little tidbit of advice. If someone has questions on the fit of a pair of shoes or boots and they are not your size, it's okay to state that. I will sometimes try and Google search and see if they're like maybe on the website it says these shoes, you know, run small, size up, blah, blah, blah. I will include those into the message and I'll tell them according to the site. And then that way, if a case is opened, I can you know, revert back to that screenshot and say, you know, this is what their website said. But if I cannot confirm the fit, I usually just state that. I'll tell them, you know what, these shoes are not my size, so I cannot confirm how they will fit on you. Although like I could me measure the inside sole, a lot of people won't go that far, but yeah, I'm just happy I was able to make that sale and move those boots out of my inventory. All right, next up, we have a two-piece bundle. Both of these items I have had for a while, and I think we're maybe bad buys. Maybe not the North Face. Okay, well, I should just talk about them. So the first is a North Face black windstopper jacket in a size medium. I could have had a better stock photo. I think that's one of the downfalls, or even tried, yeah... See, North Face is one of those Vero brands. I had a sweater one time that I took photos and created my own stock photo, but it was a really good looking photo and it got taken down because they thought it was one of theirs. And I had to contact Posh and I was like, look through my pictures. That is my stock photo. I created that stock photo. 
but since then I'm super cautious with North Face because I had an issue with them pulling one of my listings. I think this jacket maybe looked like an older style when in reality it was quite a new style jacket. And then the other item that sold was an L.L. Bean purple fleece lined zip up vest and that was in a size large. Now I don't know if I would grab a purple one. I think I picked up that vest just because it was L.L. Bean and I was like well it'll do good and there's lots of people that like certain colors. But yeah, the bundle sold for $55, which was much lower than what I thought that it would sell for or that each individual item was worth. You know what? I've been sitting on them for a while and she had liked both items. So I just tossed them into the bundle and said I could give her a 50% discount. Part of it is because my sales have been so slow. I'm willing to move old stock just to kind of get my cost of goods back, make a couple bucks, keep it moving along. I've really been reflecting into some of my sourcing over the last year. And, you know, I unless I'm paying a buck or two, which rarely happens, I'm going to start taking less risks just for the time being while slow, you know, while sales are pretty slow. But yeah, ugh kind of just sad when you see items sell that you're like I totally saw that going much better than it did <laughs> whatever it is what it is next is a 2010 winter olympics whistler merino wool cardigan in a size medium this sold for $30 and I just picked this up maybe like a month month and a half ago at a church sale so that was a pretty good flip and I think I paid like a dollar fifty or two bucks for it when I bought it though, I'll be honest, I thought that it was a vintage one. It definitely has the vintage look. And then looking at it, it was from the 2010 Olympics. I should have picked up on that because the 80s Olympics were in Calgary. Whatever. I, I did like the style of it. Next up is a two-piece bundle. Goes to one of my faves on Instagram and Poshmark seller, Callista. She bought two pieces one was the new tags barefoot dreams cozy lightweight uh, robe jacket i'm not sure what it's called and the second item was the free people french terry hooded long sleeve throw type thing i don't know it was these are such hard ones to use uh keywords with or to title them the bundle sold for 150 dollars and both items i had just listed the same day so thank you so much calista for buying these and i hope you enjoy them that barefoot's dream barefoot's bare, barefoot dreams jacket is like amazing amazing and i think if it would have been one size smaller i would have kept it but Gosh, that was an amazing piece and thank you so much. Next is a Spider Encore Full Zip Insulator Black Jacket, size XL, sold for $48. This is another item that I have had for a long time and I want to say at least a year. I don't even remember <laughs> when I sourced it. Uh, I did have it listed pretty high just because Spider stuff tends to be, you know, retail value is quite high. But uh, here's another but. I got lots of butts here. But I've held on to it forever. So I don't know. Maybe overpriced. Maybe not as desirable as I thought it would be. Very happy and grateful for the $48 sale. That's for sure. Next item is an Aritzia Wilfred Daria vegan leather pair of pants. They were in a size extra small. I sold a couple pair of Daria pants recently and I think they are still trending. And style tags that I would use for this are vegan, faux leather, and minimalist. So if you have any pairs, add those keywords and make sure that you have Daria in the title because I, I think that it's a style that people are searching up and looking for. And not everyone likes the Melina pant. I think there's lots of people that still like skinny pants, even though the straight and tapered leg pants are trending. If you can get these, I think for a good cost of goods, I would be grabbing them. Next up is a pair of Clark brown leather tall riding boots in a size eight. They sold for 50 bucks. This was a quick flip. I had them for, listed for maybe a week, couple days probably and it did not surprise me. Clark's is a brand that typically is selling pretty well, good quality. The style tags that I used for this were leather, western, and bohemian, because I thought this would look good with like, 
leggings and a skirt and like an oversized sweater like I could see these riding boots being worn in like a boho style as well yeah I I actually really enjoyed these boots looking for more tall leather boots I've sold two pairs of Clarks I think in the last month and the last pair were a pair of black ones that that had a heel on them and they sold for $108. So I think there's some value in them. Next up is another Skims piece. This is the Fits Everybody Scoop Neck. It was in a size 2X and it sold for $45. Definitely not making the big profits on this, but able to get my cost of goods, you know, flowing back in. Like I said, just kind of hoping to recoup my losses with those ones and we are gonna move along. <laughs> not sitting and dwelling on it. Next up is a pair of a Goldie Ripley straight leg jeans in a size 25. These sold for $70. I actually sold these in my live sale a couple weeks ago or like a month ago. The buyer ended up canceling the purchase uh, before I shipped it out. I relisted them and I actually sold them for more money. I think they only sold for like $45 on the live show and here they sold for 70, which very happy. I don't know if I would grab that style again. I've been sitting on these jeans for a while and they haven't been getting a lot of likes. Definitely a bit of an older style for them. Next up is a pair of Lululemon Align pants. These were in a size 10, 25 inch, and they sold for $68. Still selling Lulu definitely is probably one of my top producing brands. I feel like it's hard to find consistent items in sizes that people are looking for. If I find them, I'm scooping them up, uh, hoping that they'll sell for over 70. Next up is a vintage John Malloy wool knit gray sweater in a size medium, sold for $46. I have had this sweater for a while. I am thinking I've actually had it since spring. So happy to see this one going. Style tags that I would use for this are vintage, wool, and neutral. Very neutral tone. Another like underrated style tag i think there's lots of people that love neutral wardrobes and if you have items that fall into that make sure you're using that style tag one of my favorites if you go through my listings you will see neutral in a lot of listings we have two more posh sales and then i have two ebay sales to share the next sale on poshmark was a stetson wool knit cardigan duster this one sold for 42 dollars i've had this listed for a couple weeks but another pretty quick sale happy with that let's see what style tags i was using on this wool western and dark academia definitely western anything that's stetson i'm gonna put western rodeo southwestern those types of things and then i like the dark academia it definitely had like those vibes those dark vibes all right and the last poshmark sale is a pair of aritzia babaton Cohen wool herringbone trouser pants. These were in a size eight and they sold for $65. Those just sold yesterday. Happy about it. Starting to see some Aritzia pants moving, but they're definitely not selling as quickly as they were, you know, a month or two ago. But I, I don't know. I hate to say it's just the shopping habits right now. I think part of it is the Poshmark app and those live sales. I think it's definitely killing sales right now. All right, on eBay, I had two sales. One of them I had to cancel and there was a shipping issue. We'll talk about that. But the first is a pair of AS98 Airstep purple studded heeled Chelsea boots in a size nine women's and they sold for $90. I found these in a tough tote with a whole pile of items that need to be listed for winter. So I am starting to work through those. And that was a good sale. I've never, I don't, Actually, I think I have sold AS98 on eBay and I feel like I have pretty good luck on eBay with that brand. And then the second sale, well, would be sale, but they didn't actually go through, was a pair of Wilfred Molina pants. These were in a size two. She actually sent me an offer for 65 and I was like, no, I think I had them listed for like 95. So I came back at 80. Then she sent me an offer for 68. And typically I would be like, no, I'm not even doing this. You're like petty bidding. You're being petty. But I was like, you know what? Take them because my sales have been so slow. And again, getting that, you know, inventory investment back into my business. But the issue was 
she was in Europe and I guess I didn't have overseas shipping set in my eBay listing. I was just doing North America, so Canada, United States. I did look it up because for a tracked package to, I think she wanted it to England, it was looking at like $50, $60, which I was like, I don't think she's willing to pay that. That's literally the cost of the item. And she was like, well, would it be cheaper to send it to France? And I was like, I don't think so. It's the same distance. And so I said, I was just going to relist the item. I canceled the sale. I just said the shipping address didn't match and um, kind of apologized to her. I was trying to relist it from my phone on my supper break yesterday. I couldn't figure out how to get tracked package outside of Canada, United States. And I literally just gave up, relisted the item and was like, sorry, I am unable to ship it. But I'm okay with that because really I did not want to sell those pants for $68. So I am okay with that. All right, that wraps up the sales for Poshmark and eBay. I am working on listing more stuff to eBay, so I would like to see it, you know, producing more for me. But let's go over my numbers. In total, I sold 30 items over the last two weeks for a total of $1,476. Now, last week's sales were like $1,200, but the remainder, not very good. The average sale price for these items was $49.20, which I'm happy with. That's I'm shooting for over $45. When you look at this, you're probably thinking, Tab, you're just complaining. This is awesome. People would love these types of sales. And I agree. But keep in mind that just last week alone, I listed 42 items. The week before that, I listed, I think, 30 items. I have listed 70 items and only sold 30. That is not a good sell rate, sell through rate for me. And especially with my higher cost of goods, they, these are not good numbers. So typically if I list, we'll say over two weeks, say I list 80 items, I'm selling 50. My sell through rate typically is quite high. And the part that like upsets me the most is not that I think it's necessarily the items I'm getting or anything like that. I think it's Poshmark. I think it's the live shows that are killing Poshmark. I used to have so many likes, like I would wake up in the morning and there would be a ton of likes on my phone. I could send out offers, I could send out messages, I could create bundles. It is so sparse lately, like the activity, even in the evening is so sparse. And I think what part, and I, I would love to be a fly on the wall in their earnings meetings because I feel like the, the app earnings must be down because if we're not making much money, they're not making much money. Part of it is that typically if people were to kind of hop on the app, look around, find some items, shop people's closets, right? Now they're going into these live shows and they're not necessarily spending, but they're being entertained. So if you went on the app and shopped and that was a form of entertainment, now you can go into these live shows and there's entertainment there. I also think these live shows and item selling for like, even item selling for $20 to $30, if the average sale price used to be $50 to $65, that is affecting our sales. People are looking at what items are selling for and they know, they know that those pants or that sweater sold in a live show for X amount. So I think that's also why we're getting so many low offers as well. Uh, I did have someone send me a comment yesterday through Instagram and they were like, I literally cannot deal with these low ball offers anymore. Like they had reached their wits end. And I agree. I agree. I've noticed an increase in them. I've noticed a decrease in the activity. Uh, I noticed the same amount of shares, but I think that's just all of us resellers and our automation sharing everyone's closets. But the likes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So here is what I'm doing in my business right now. I'm slowing down on sourcing. Uh, to me, it doesn't make sense to have more money going out of my business than coming in. And not that I am spending too much, but if I only have $200 in sales one week, which is what I'm at. No, I think I'm at $117 this week. I have $117 in sales and it is Thursday. That is not good. 
that that does not justify me going out and spending four hundred dollars on inventory this week like it just doesn't add up I also don't know how long this is going to last and I have some concerns that this is going to last as long as the app is still kind of all over the place, right? Um, not making the changes they need to make. Part of the thing too that frust frustrates me is I feel like the changes that could be made on Posh that would increase sales, make a buyer's experience better, is really at the hands of Posh. Like things that they can do, they can fix the search, they can fix things, right? They could, you know, tab off live shows, make it a separate part of the app, you know, turn off the constant notifications that are forcing people, I think, off of the app as well. And there are things that they're just not addressing or, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but the app is not functioning how it used to. And I agree, sales are slow. We're almost at Christmas. People, you know, are spending money on other things. But I have never seen this slowness. Compared to what I'm listing, like my sell-through rate, I have never seen this slowness. And that's just my personal experience. I would love to hear how you are doing. I would love to hear how your sales are. I would love to hear any insights that you have into your closet or things that maybe you've noticed. Do you agree with me? Do you think live sales are really just messing up the whole app and activity? Good or bad, I don't care. Drop it down. Please, like, let's just share and grow together and try and come up with some solutions so that we all make it into 2023 with our businesses. I am out of here. This is all I got. I wish there was more. I, that's all I got, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. You are my tribe. I love all the comments. I love all the communication, everything that's been happening in these videos. It's just so, I don't know, it's so encouraging and amazing to see how much we're willing to help each other. And I just want to say, I see you all. I see you all. I read all your comments. And thank you so much for being such an awesome part of this community. All right. I am out of here. I am wishing you all many sales. Like I, man, we need all the extra juju. Um, send it to me too. Because <laughs> I need some too. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.